Ladies and gentlemen, when White House invited African leaders to take part in the just concluded US Africa summit, they sought to strengthen their economic and political bilateral ties with the continent of Africa. They also wanted to look into ways of displacing China, which of late surpassed America in their trade and economic cooperation with Africa. There was a time when America was enjoying the monopoly of trading with Africa. But they went to slumber and China realized that there was a gap. So China moved in very fast and filled that gap and the statistics that we have indicates that China has surpassed America. This has caused a lot of sleepless nights to America. And so they decided uh, that they organized for a summit to try and woo African leaders back so that they can do business. The monopoly that they were enjoying is no longer there. And while in that meeting, Joe Biden took that opportunity to try and seduce African leaders. He dangled several goodies, including a $55 billion that is going to share in a, a period of three months with the African continent. And someone was telling me that, Frederick, what is 55 billion shillings that is being spread over uh, for, you know, three years to over 55 nations? And to him, he was saying that this is a little bit, this is too little, too late. By the closure of that summit, Joe Biden was convinced that he had done enough and he thought that now Africa will rethink and maybe uh, make a U-turn to start trading and doing business with the U.S. as it was before. But barely a week after this meeting, it seems this task is not a walk in the park. It seems to Joe Biden that they need to do more than just organizing for a, a, a three-day summit. Because one of the people who attended that meeting is the president of Rwanda. Mr. Paul Kagame. And Mr. Paul Kagame is poking holes into the approach by which USA is trying to get itself into African affairs. This is what uh, Mr. Mr. Paul Kagame was saying while uh, answering questions from some of the international press. And he was saying that I don't think we need to be bullied into making or taking the, uh, choices on who we have to trade with. And he was saying, choosing whether to do business with the US or China is really none of our business. And he went further saying that uh, we need both of them as long as, uh, we need bo both of them as our partners, as long as they respect us and understand that there is something that we also offer on the table. And so I want us to look deeply into the statements of Paul Kagame who are really targeted with these statements. What does it portend to Africa and especially Kenya with our president who is inclined to the USA? Before we do this, allow me to request you with humility to subscribe to our channel if you have not done this. Click the notification bell and like our videos. You know, for very many years, USA and Europe had enjoyed monopoly as far as trading with Africa is concerned. But US approach is a cocktail of economic goodies and dictatorship. Because experts see something that is very sinister. America will come into your country. And you see, when they come to your country, they are supposed to be visitors. You host them. But they will start interfering with your democracy. They will give you some money, some loans, some aid. But they will also want to know who you elect as your president, who you elect as your prime minister. And, and they would always want to know whom are you doing business with. 
Even in the just concluded US uh, America summit, there were several nations that were banned from attending it. Uh, nations like Burkina Faso and Eritrea and Sudan were not allowed to attend. Why? Because the American policy towards Africa is one that does not see Africa as their equal. I know we might not be equal with America in terms of very many things, but they do not feel that we have something to offer on the table. Because if you look at Burkina Faso, Eritrea, and those nations that were never invited, you ask America and they will tell you that they do not respect human rights, they do not practice democracy. I have said on this platform that if there is something that I don't agree with, is what I call selective justice. That in some nations, you, you clarify them as, as nations that do not you know, respect democracy. Yet in other countries, we have presidents who even kill their, their, their opponents. But the USA does not talk about this. They really keep quiet. In Kenya today, we have a president who is a US project. They aided Mr. William Ruto to become the president. The USA, after signing these deals, will compel you to consume some of the things that you don't need. We are staring directly at a possibility of being coerced to start consuming GMO material. Ten years ago, Uhuru Kenyatta had banned the, the, the consumption of GMO, genetically mod modified organization, organisms. But immediately, William Ruto came to power after taking oath of office. The first thing that he did was to lift that ban. But that ban. So USA will come, and we appreciate, and by the way, we are thankful that the USA is giving us a lot of goodies, some money, some loans, some aid. But all that Africa is asking is that they don't get into the political affairs of our nation. And that is why Paul Kagame is making it very categorical, respect us and accept that we have something to offer on the table. You know, China, China's approach is one that uh, has really uh, endeared them to the African nations. Because China will come and they will do their business and go. They will not get so much into your affairs. Number two, I have seen this discussion that uh, we have got a lot of loans from China. But on further scrutiny, I just realized that uh, according to the economic stati statistics, Europe and USA are the major creditors in Africa. The loan that we have gotten from the USA and Europe is much more than the one that we have the, that Africa has taken from China. In fact, the, the the Chinese ambassador to the USA sought to clarify a few things because there was this notion after that summit that uh, Africa is about to fall to debt trap, and this is one of the things that Kagame was asked, and he had to say this that both the parties should be blamed because he's saying that. Every nation should borrow very cautiously. I remember when uh, William Ruto was campaigning, he was complaining very vehemently about the debts that they took with Uru Kenyatta from China. And he was saying that uh, the common monarchy is being overburdened. But just a few months into office, the trade minister, trade cabinet secretary Murkomen, said that they will get more loans from China to expand the, the, the SGR from Naivasha to Malaba. So they are reneging, slowly they are reneging on their promises. In fact, recently, William Ruto went to South Korea and there were some loans that he got. So all the talks about minimizing the amount of loan that we are getting from the, the from other international partners were just empty talks because now they are going back to what Uhuru was doing. And uh, Paul Kagame is warning that even as you take your debts, be very cautious. Evaluate the economic importance of the loans that you are taking. Negotiate for 
their value, the amount of interest. It is not lost on, the, on us that China took the, 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 the Sri Lankan port. Because when Sri Lanka took some loan from China, they used their port as a part of collateral security. And when they could not pay, China took the management of that port. And this is something that African nations are being cautioned about. Is there any courageous leader who can stand firm and tell off the international community whenever they are wrong? Is there any other leader apart from Kagame who can tell them no? Come and stay as invited guests. Do not get into our bedroom. And so this message is one that I, is really synonymous with our, our president because we are leaning too much towards the, the West. It is like he's switching uh, from East. But whether West or East, the question is, let us be very careful. Let us have the interest of the nation at first. The interest of the ordinary man at first. Interest of Kenyans at first. Then, then others, the international community, will come second. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we must have choices. Whether it is China, America, Europe, and even Russia should come in. Do you know why? In any competition, we need to have several suppliers. Even in business, when there are very many shops around or several suppliers, it will force, number one, the quality of services or, or, or products that you are enjoying will be very high. Because one realizes that if I am not the only person who is, who is providing this, then if I compromise on the quality, then I will lose market. Number two, the prices of commodities and services will also go down because there is a lot of competition. You will not buy something that is of, uh, of, is of higher price when the quality is the same. Yet there is another with the, with the same quality but of a lower, a, lower, a lower price. So the moment when the USA was enjoying monopoly in Africa is over. Now China has come in and China is giving them a lot of competition. The rates at which we are given loan, Africa must now start negotiating so that the rates can go down. Because if China refuses, they will go to USA. If USA refuses, they will go to Europe. So they must start negotiating as a team so that they get value for their money, they get good rates for paying their loans. And paying, paying the loans include the percentage interest, the duration also matters a lot. And so I want to agree with Kagame when he says that we should not be compelled into doing business with the U.S. alone. Number two, USA must respect the rights of other nations. They should realize that we are in the same century with them. We are not lagging behind. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? I like the statements of uh, Paul Kagame because... I am an African and Africa is my business. It is high time and join me in spreading this message that our development past, uh, partners must respect us, must respect our democracy. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, for Africa to stand up to be counted in all the continents, for African leaders to write their own story, they must also do things the right way. We cannot have Africa where elections are being rigged every day. We cannot have an Africa where we have coups. Huh? We, 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 we have coups. Election is done. Within some four months, there is a military coup. A president has gone into asylum. Another one has imposed himself. We cannot have an Africa that their story is always corruption, corruption, corruption. We need to use our money prudently. So that we need, so that we write a, a story which is not hunger, drought, murder, corruption. If we do this, then we will stand in the international arena and give our own story. But if we continue engaging in corruption and murder and all these things, then CNN will continue misrepresenting and misreporting us. But do you blame them? Because we are the co-authors of our own problems. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? 
because that is my take.